Hi, and thank you for joining me in this introduction course to Logic Pro 10. So this is a beginner's course, so if you're after a more advanced course, I would not recommend this. But if you've just started making music with Logic or DAW's digital audio workstations, this course could really help you quite a lot, just to get on your feet and start making music in Logic. So what I've done is I've actually filmed this lecture as one of the latest lectures, so I'm going to give you an overview quickly now of what you're going to learn on screen with me. So we're going to start off with the interface of Logic Pro 10, and I'm going to show you basically what all the buttons and features do. After this, we're going to have a look at creating your own music with Apple Loops. Then I'm going to show you how to record MIDI with software instruments. Then I'm going to give you a quick overview of the drum instrument, which is brand new to Logic Pro 10, and I personally think this is absolutely incredible. Then I'm going to give you a basic guide of automation and live automation. Then I'm going to show you how to understand the basics of the ES2 synthesizer. Then I'm going to give you a quick overview of flex time and flex pitch and how to create your own harmonies with flex pitch. Then I'm going to give you a really basic overview of mixing. This introduction course is just over one hour long. And after all this, in the bonus sections, you'll find some discount codes for my complete guide to Logic Pro 10 if you want a more advanced course or you want to take your learning to the next level after this. So yeah, let's jump in and I'll see you in the first lecture. Hi and welcome to this first lecture about Logic Pro 10. So this is an introduction to Logic Pro 10. I'm going to quickly go over what everything basically does to get you up and running and making music straight away. So if you do want a more in-detailed course about Logic Pro 10, I definitely suggest checking out my complete guide to Logic Pro 10, which is where you go from beginner all the way to advanced. If you check out the bonus lecture after all this, I give you some special discounts and coupon codes as well to get you up and running on the complete guide to Logic Pro 10. But let's first of all, let's just jump in. So the first thing I would suggest is find your application of Logic Pro 10. So go through your applications, find Logic Pro, and then dragging it to your dock. Here I've got Logic Pro and Logic Pro X. So what Logic Pro is, that's Logic Pro 9, the older version, and Logic Pro X is Logic Pro 10. So what you do is just drag it to your dock. I've already got it here. And then clicking on Logic Pro. That way, if Logic is on your dock, you're a lot more likely to just click on it and open and start making music straight away. So let's first of all go on File, and then we've got a few different options. We've got New, New from Template, Open, and Open Recent. New will start a new blank project for you. New from Template will give you several different templates to choose from. Open will obviously open a previous project, and Open Recent, if you click on here, will give you a list of recent projects that you've been working on. The reason this one here is it's blank is because the project's actually on another hard drive and I haven't got that hard drive plugged in right now. So that's why it looks like this. So let's just go on new from template for the moment. And here it will give us several different templates. So we have hip hop, electronic, songwriter, orchestral, multi-track, music for picture and empty projects. So these will give us different templates. So hip hop will give us different drum machines and different synthesizers. Electronic will give us different synths. Songwriter will give us different options for plugging in a guitar or audio or microphones. Orchestral will give us a lot of orchestral sounds like synthesizers, strings, um, and flutes and stuff like that as well. These are all MIDI instruments, and MIDI stands for Musical Instrument Digital Interface. So MIDI doesn't actually give the sound, it just controls the sound. So if you have a MIDI controller or a keyboard, you can actually change some of, the, some of these sounds. So they're actually software instruments. So it's stuff like synthesized violins, but they're actually meant to sound like real violins and are used on a sampler, which in Logic is the EXS24. So basically someone else has recorded in sounds of violins or strings. Obviously, if you want real orchestral sounds, I would recommend trying to record the real thing. But the sounds on Logic are pretty good as well. But for now, let's go down to Empty Project. And below, we have stuff like the tempo, the key signature, the time signature, the audio input. So this is your, uh, this here's my interface. So I've got an interface called One plugged in. But if you don't have that, just choose built-in input and built-in output. You only really need an interface if you're recording audio. So it's stuff like guitars or microphones. But if you're just using the built-in sounds on your laptop and on Logic, 
you don't really need an interface to start with. Then we have the sample rate and frame rate and surround format. Let's just leave this for now. We can also tap in the tempo. So if you have a certain tempo in your head, you can just tap it in. But for now, let's just leave this on 120. We can just click and type it in. And hit choose. So instead of doing all that, you can just go on File over here and New. That This will bring up a new blank project as well. So here we've got a few different options. We've got software instruments, which are the MIDI instruments, which basically are the software instruments. So they're all the virtual instruments or synthesized instruments. Audio is stuff like a guitar or a microphone, actual physical audio, but you do need an interface for this to actually work. Drummer, which is brand new to Logic Pro 10. This is actually fantastic. I will be going over Drummer briefly in a later lecture. External MIDI, so this is for plugging in old synthesizers or any external MIDI. We're going to leave this in this uh, introduction course, but if you want to know about external MIDI, I do have a lecture about it in my complete guide. Then we've got guitar and bass. This is basically for if you want to plug in a guitar or a bass, but you do need an audio interface to do this. For now, let's just choose software instruments. And below it says default patch. This is where you can actually choose your synthesizer. But for now, let's just choose default patch and output. This is your output also. Okay, number of tracks. This is if you just want one track or two or even more. But for now, let's leave it on one and hit create. Okay, this will bring up the instrument library here. So this is basically all the different sounds. So we've got the user channel strip settings. This is if you create your own sounds, which I do quite a lot, as you can see. Then we've got bass. So this will give different bass sounds, drum kit, electronic drum kit, guitar, etc. A really great way of quickly testing out the sound is by opening something called musical typing. This is where you can change your Mac keyboard into a musical keyboard. We can do this by hitting the key command, command K. This will bring up musical typing. We can either click or you can play the notes. So I'm just going to hit the keys A, S and D and this will play the notes C, D and E. So we can just go through any of these here and just click. You can see above here that the picture has changed from a keyboard to a bass. Let's just hit the keys A, S and D again. And you can hear it's changed to a bass sound. So if you're new to Logic Pro 10, I'd suggest spending a few hours just going through all these different sounds and just seeing what kind of sounds we actually do get on Logic Pro 10. Okay, we can close this library by hitting this library button here. And we can close musical typing by hitting Command K again. We can also go up to Window. And then down to Show Musical Typing will bring up musical typing also. We also have this bar here that has some information. So we've got the actual synthesizer. This says EXS24, which is a sampler. So someone's actually recorded in the sounds of them playing the bass in different notes, different like styles, different velocities. And this is where it's all kept on the EXS24. And below this, we've got all the different plugins. So we've got a bass amp, which is meant to simulate a bass amp. Compressor, which kind of compresses the sound, which makes the loud quieter and the quiet louder. A pedal board, which will give us more effects, and an echo, which obviously is an echo effect. We can click on any of these and go in and edit these separately. We also have send. This is for sending an auxiliary send. So this is for stuff like adding reverb to more than one channel. Then we've got the output here. We also have the pan, so we can send it to the left or the right speakers. We've got the volume here as well. And below this, we've got solo and mute. Obviously, solo would mean you would just hear this instrument, and mute means you will not hear this instrument. We can close this inspector bar by hitting the I button here. So going along, we've got all these up here as well. A good thing to do if you're new to Logic Pro 10 is to hit this question mark here. This is quick help. So whatever we scroll over, it will quickly tell us what it means. So let's go over to this record button, and here it says record button. So yeah, if you're brand new to Logic Pro, I would just leave Quick Help on and just scroll over all the different things and it quickly tell you. I'll tell you also as well. So here we've got Smart Control Buttons. So this is new to Logic Pro as well. It lets you quickly change the tones and the compressions and the effects of your different instruments. Here you can see it's got Boost and then Tone, Compression, Fuzz, Delay. 
Going along, we've got this mixer button here. A mixing desk, or virtual mixing desk, will actually appear. This is similar to the inspector, but allows us to look at several different instruments all at the same time. So this is for editing the information. So if we record in any information, you'll be able to see it here. Also, we have a piano keyboard on the side. So this links up to the certain notes. We can just click the notes here and we will hear what they sound like. On this editor toolbar, you will notice there's a pencil tool over here. So if we hit the command button, we can actually draw in information. We can move the size of it and we can just drag and move it all around. If we hit enter, it will go to the start of our song. If we hit the space bar, it will play. So that just played in what I just typed in. Going along, we have rewind, fast forward, to the start, play and record. To record, um, you can just hit the R button. That will allow you to record also. Or to play, you can just hit the space bar. To record MIDI information, a MIDI controller can really help, or a USB keyboard, which allows you to play in the MIDI information on a keyboard. Alternatively, you can use musical typing. So if we open this up with Command K again, and hit the R button. Let's just delete this information first. We can click on it, then hit backspace, and that will delete. Enter to go to the start, and R to record. And then we can use the musical typing to record in parts. And space to stop the recording. You'll notice that there was a metronome or a click that played along. We can turn this on and off by hitting the metronome button. At the moment, we can't see the metronome button, but if we go down to this arrow button here, we'll have click, and this will turn the click on and off. Going along, we have the LCD display here. So we actually have different presets for the LCD display. If we click on this button of this music note and the metronome, we have beats and project, beats and time, beats, time and custom. So beats and time will tell you the time as well. So you can see here that this is eight seconds in. Beats will just show you the beats. So this is beat five or bar five to bar nine, bar 10, etc the different beats in the bar. So this is the second beat of bar 10 here. So it goes along. If we hit this button again, it'll go to time, which is just time. And custom, which is very similar to Logic Pro 9's custom display. So if you hit this, it does look a bit complicated, but it does have a lot of information. It has CPU, which is basically how much power is needed to run your project. So just be careful of that. Make sure your CPU doesn't go too far over. HD, which is hard drive. We'll also go in and out. This is for MIDI information. And we've got the time signature here. So we can change this for, drag it up, you can see it changing. Here we can change the tempo. But for now, let's just go back up to here to Beats and Project. Going along, we've got more information here. Let's just close Musical Typing, Command K. And here it's Cycle button. So what a cycle is, it's a section that just goes round and round and round. It will appear as an orange bar above, like this. So whatever's in here will just repeat. So let's just drag this just to this first section here and hit space bar. And you can tell that just repeats. If we click it again, it will go off. Here we've got the tuner button, this will open the tuner. Got S, which is the solo button, which will solo. We've got counting button. So this is if we record, we have a counting, so we know what tempo the song actually is. Going along, we have the list editor button. Going along, we have notepad, if you want to quickly add notes. And we have Apple loops, which I'll explain in a bit more detail in a later lecture. This is basically where we have different loops of information or MIDI where we can just quickly drag into our project. And then we have the browser button. This allows us to browse our different files and media. Okay, we also have a zoom in here. We can zoom the track in or out. 
like so. And we also have these buttons up here as well. This allows us to edit. We've got more functions here and views. It's a good idea just to go through a quick help and just go through everything again, just to double check so you know what's going on. Then we have the automation, which allows you to change certain parameters of the track, such like the volume or the pan or the effects. I'll be going over automation in a later lecture as well, so be sure to check this one out because it is quite detailed. Then we've got the flex. I'll be going over this in a later lecture as well. This is basically for audio tracks where you can change the time and the pitch. Then we've got this button here. This allows you to see the project as it plays. So for example, if your project is all the way over here, your whole screen will move so you can see it. It's a lot easier to explain when you actually have a larger project. So it's just so you can see your project go along rather than having to quickly always scroll across. Okay, so that's the basic interface of Logic Pro 10. We do have a few more buttons here as well, which is this is to add a new track or this is to duplicate the track, and we also have solo button as well. So to add a new track, just hit this button, and this window will appear. To duplicate this track, just hit this button, and it will copy it over. So yeah, that's the basic interface of Logic Pro 10. Thank you for watching this lecture. Hi, welcome to this next lecture. In the previous lecture, I went over the interface, so what basically all the buttons do in a nutshell. In this next lecture, I'm going to go over Apple Loops quickly. But this is just a brief overview. If you do check out my complete guide to Logic Pro 10, I do go into Apple Loops in a lot more detail. But this lecture will just get you up and running and creating music straight away. Okay, let's continue where we left off. So let's get rid of Quick Help by hitting this button here. And you also notice that the time signature goes from 2-4 to 4-4. So we can just quickly change this by actually hitting this button here. And this will open the global tracks. You can see here it says 2-4 and 4-4. So if I just click on here, just change this to a 4. I thought I'd just correct this just before I continue because the loops will sound quite different going from 2-4 to 4-4. But certain mistakes or errors that you make can actually work in your favour. I've written music before where I've accidentally put the wrong time signature or tempo and it can work in your favour. So don't be scared to experiment or try new things in your music writing. Okay, let's just open up the Apple Loops. So the easiest way to do this is to hit this loop button here. So this will actually open up this browser, which is our loop library. So it does look like there's quite a lot of stuff going on here. Let's talk about these boxes first of all. So this allows you to narrow down your search. So for example, if we want to find um, a hip hop drum beat, we could go on all drums, beats, urban, and then we can search down for H, because it does go alphabetical if we choose it that way. We can change it by tempo or key or beats, and then hip hop beat, here we go. Okay, we can actually reset all this by hitting the button here. And we can even just type in, so say we want hip hop and beat. And here we go, we've got hip hop broke beat. Let's hear what this sounds like. You also notice that some of these have a green box and some of them have a blue box. So the green box, which has a picture of a quaver note, is actually a MIDI loop. So let's just drag this over to our project. And you can see it's exported with a green box and it says hip hop remix. So this is actually a software instrument with MIDI information. So if we double click on this, we'll open our editor. And you can see it's come up as MIDI notes. So we can actually move these around to different notes. So we can really move and edit it how we like. Let's just hear this back. Now let's hear this. Okay, we can close the editor by hitting the scissor button here. Let's just delete this for now, backspace, and click on the track, backspace, and this will delete it. The blue one is actually an audio file, so it's actually an audio recording. So if we drag this over, this blue one, 
you'll see it will come up as waves. So it does make it slightly harder to edit and manipulate, but we can still do quite a lot with audio waves. Let's just make this smaller. We also have this view here, if we hit this button, has a list style search selection. So if we go in all, we go in acoustic, and we get rid of hip hop beat up here. But you can see the numbers rapidly boosted up. So let's just go on animals. And we've got and then we've got um a crickets loop. So someone's actually gone out with um microphone and recorded cricket sounds. So it's not just drum beats and bass sounds, for example, there is a lot of strange experimental ambient sounds as well. So going back to this list editor, let's go back to the one with the squares. And here we can basically just click on some of these, for example, distorted strings. And here we can hear Desire E cellos, which should be distorted strings. Say, for example, I just want strings. You can click on distorted again, and it will get rid of it. So now this is just the strings. We also have stuff like scale. So I have major, minor, neither, good for both. So for example, if we click on minor, this should just be minor sounding strings. And we've got signature, so at the moment it's in 4-4. Four, four. Let's try 3-4 and see what comes up. It's quite hard to hear that these are in 3-4. Let's click on strings again and try piano. And here we go, classic waltz piano. So this would be a lot easier to tell that it's in 3-4. Okay. Let's go back to 4-4 four, four and hit reset. We also notice we've got beats here. This is how long the actual loop is. So 16 means it's four bars long. We've got tempo. It will actually move to our project tempo, but this is its original tempo. So some loops might sound better in its original tempo. We also have key here. When we drag this over to our project, it will move to the key of our project, which is C major. We can change it just by clicking on this here. So it just tells us our original key. Also down here, it says play in song key or original key. Let's click on original key and hear this two-step head piano. Well, that's in C major anyway, so it sounds the same, but let's try this one, two-step electronic bass, which it should play in F major. And then go along to song key. That should play in C major. You will notice that there are over 7,000 items here. If we click on minor and we change it to major, there are 3,000 items. So whatever you narrow down will actually say the number of items here. There are tons and tons of loops to choose from. So that anyone says there aren't any loops to choose from in Logic hasn't really learned to use it properly because there are so many you can actually use. If we hit this button here, we have more to choose from. We have hip hop, electro, dubstep, um, iLife sound effects, which is quite cool. Let's just try this one. So stuff like aeroplane sounds, alarm clocks, and barbecue, bark, um, bell tower. So this could be quite cool if you're creating like um, the interlude sounds or anything that's quite experimental, ambient. You know, there's some interesting sounds. The great thing about Apple Loops is you're free to use them in any way, shape, or form. So they can really, really be useful in your project. Don't be afraid to use Apple Loops as well. A lot of artists do use Apple Loops in their songs. So yeah, thank you for watching this lecture. This lecture, I just quickly went over Apple Loops and how to use them in your projects. Thank you for watching. Hi, this next lecture is about recording in software instruments and recording in your own parts. So let's continue where we left off. Let's just hit this loop button here and this will close the loop library. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to delete all of this by selecting it and hitting the backspace and this will delete it. I'm also going to delete these tracks by clicking them and hitting the backspace. And when you delete them all, this window will appear. Let's start from scratch and choose Software Instrument. I'm going to start off with a drum kit. 
It's one of my favorite ways of writing music is to start off with the drums. So let's go on drum kit here and let's choose Detroit Garage. You can see the picture has changed to a drum kit. Let's close a library by hitting the button here. And then we can open up musical typing with command and K. So when we hit some of the buttons on a Mac keyboard, a drum kit will appear. We can change the octaves by hitting the Z button here or the X to go up. So I'm looking for the kick drum. Here we go, and here's the snare. It's the D and the kick is the A or the C. <laughs> Okay, for now I'm just going to record in the snare and the kick drum. So we go to the start by hitting enter and record by hitting R. I'm just going to manually play it in. Okay, this is actually looped. Let's just close musical type in. And if we hit the L button, it will turn the loop on and off. So I'm going to have the loop off for now. The loop does, it allows you to quickly just loop your MIDI information or audio information. So we can loop it by going on here and you see this little arrow and we just drag along to the right and that loops it. Okay, now we've recorded this. It was kind of in time, but I want it perfectly in time. So the way we do this is to open up the editing information by double clicking the track. And here we can actually see the notes. You can see this first one isn't quite right. So we click on it and drag it in place. This one I don't actually want. I want the loop to end here. So I'm going to click on it and delete. Another way of doing this is to quantize the information. So what this means is it puts it all in time. So let's just select all, or we can use the key command, command A, and that will select all. And here it says time quantize. So here we have 16th notes. We have quarter notes, which are crotchets, to quavers, semi-quavers. So let's choose 16th notes. It did quantize them, but if it hadn't, you can hit the Q button as well. And now this should hopefully be perfectly in time. Then I want this to drag this over here. And hopefully, yeah, this should be in time. Let's have a listen. Okay, we can turn the metronome on as well by hitting this arrow button here and going on click, enter, and then spacebar. Still not quite in time for what I want. Double click. So I want this one to be on the beat. So a lot of this is just going through and manually going and editing. Sometimes you can't play it the same as what you think in your head or I can't. Let's have a listen. So what I'm after is boom, boom, ga. Let's just play this back. Yeah, like that. So what I do a lot of the time is I play it in and then I go through and maybe even completely edit the information. So I've changed the beat now. Let's just hear what this sounds like. Okay, let's try that. So it is quite different to what I initially played in, but I think this does work better. I'm going to turn off the click by hitting this arrow button and click and copying this over. So one way of doing this is hold down Alt and just drag over. Another way is you can like other Mac applications, Command C to copy, Command V to paste, or you can just put the loop on like this. Okay, now I'm going to add some hi-hats. So let's hit this button here to duplicate the track and open musical type in with command K and the hi-hats. Closed hi-hats are T and Y, which is F sharp and G sharp. And the open hi-hats is U, which is A sharp. Let's hit enter and R for, to record. Okay, the loop is on again, so hit L to get rid of, oh, close musical typing, then hit L to get rid of loop. And same again, double click, 
it's pretty much in time. It looks better <laughs> than what I played in before. So Command A to select all and Q button here. Okay, you can just see it's tightened up the timing. Let's put the loop on. And hopefully this drum beat should be in time. Let's have a listen. Okay, great. Now we can go through and add all the different instruments as well. I'm just gonna quickly put on the bass. So new track with this button here, software instrument, create. And let's go through and find bass. And let's try, try Liverpool bass. I presume this is a kind of Beatles sounding bass and the picture actually is a very similar bass to uh, Paul McCartney's bass. And Command K to open musical typing and enter to go to the start and R to record. You can just play this on a loop without recording, but sometimes you might not think of ideas straight away, so you can have this on a loop and just play in. But for now, I'm just gonna record in. Enter to go to the start, R to record, and let's play in the bass. Okay. That will do for now. Just looped it again, so L to get rid of loop. Double click to open the editing. It looks pretty much in time. Command A to select all. And hit the Q button to quantize. Let's just hear this back. I'm just gonna move a few of these around. You can even add your own in here. So I'm gonna draw in a note here. And let's hear what this sounds like. Okay, I think that matches the kick drum pattern a bit better. And loop this over. So that's basically how you record in your own MIDI information. You can also record in chords with musical typing. It doesn't necessarily have to just be drum beats or basses. Even you can put sound effects and control them with musical typing too. Let's just leave it on the default one, which is vintage electric piano, classic electric piano. Hit Command K and here you'll notice. Oh, maybe not that octave, but you can play chords. Obviously, it's not as easy as a real piano or a MIDI controller of keys, but you can do quite a lot just with musical typing. Okay, so thank you for watching this lecture. In this lecture, I've quickly gone through how to start making your own music and recording software instruments with Logic Pro 10 and musical typing. Hi, in this next lecture, I'm going to talk about the brand new drummer track in Logic Pro 10. So let's continue where we left off. And here you'll notice I've got a drum part, or two drum parts, a kick and a snare and a hi-hats and a bass part and a keyboard part. Let's delete the keyboard part and delete the drums by just hitting backspace and this will delete it all. Remember, if you are working on a serious project, always save at all times, hit the command Command S or go to File, Save or Save As. Okay, for now I'm gonna open up Drummer by hitting this button here and going along to Drummer. Here we've got Genre, we've got Output. Let's just leave it on the default rock one to start with and hit Create. So this is actually really exciting. Logic have actually recorded in loads of different drummers, loads of different patterns and it's actually really simple. We've got like an XY pad here and gives us two default sections that appears. So let's just hit the space bar and hear what this sounds like. And we can move this around so we've got simple and loud, loud and complex, soft and complex, simple and soft. Let's just put this simple and soft and hear what this sounds like. We also going along have claps we can add or shaker or tambourine. We also have the number of fills here so we can put loads of fills on if we want. We 
have different patterns here for the percussion, one, two, or three. Same with the hi-hats, we can choose different patterns, and the kick or snare, different patterns also. We can also choose the ride cymbals and the crashes to use rather than the hi-hats. We can also use the toms, let's just choose the toms on pattern three. And swap to the cymbals. We also have swing if you want to give a bit more of a swing feel. Let's just hear this. Change this from 8th notes to 16th note swing. Okay, let's get rid of swing, put fills in the back of the middle. And we also have this really cool button called follow. If we select this here, if we click down it will select our instrument so we can follow the bass. So the drum part will kind of follow the bass part, which is really great because a real drummer and the bassist really, what they do is they really kind of lock in and follow each other. And this follow feature really allows you to make the bass and drums lock in, which is I think is really amazing. And we also have details. So we have the feel, ghost notes, which are kind of the, the really quiet, intricate notes that people can put in. And the hi-hat information here as well. Okay, we also have different presets. So we've got Crash the Party, Echo Park, and loads more as well. Still following, still, you can change the fills and the swing. And when we go over to this other drummer information, it'll be completely different. So we can go through and change this one also. We also have different drummers different genres. So if you click here, Kyle, got Logan, Anders, etc. These are all rock drummers. And if we click on here, we have different um, we have different genres as well. Let's try electronic and choose so let's say Jester, I believe. And it comes up here saying if you basically if you change the drummer, it will change the information. So let's just hit change drummer. Okay, let's just hear this. You can hear, it's very different. We have different types of percussion and cymbals and claps and stuff as well. But the best thing to do is just to go through all these and just experiment and just, yeah, trial and error really. Let's go back to a rock and choose Carl again. I'll just show you one more feature in Drummer also. So here it says So Cal. So if we create a new software instrument and hit Create, Let's go on to drum kit and so cal. Here it is. Close the library, close the inspector, and we can actually drag this information down and it will play on the same sounding drum kit, but we can actually go through and edit MIDI information, which is absolutely awesome. So if we double click on this, you will notice all these blocks of MIDI. So we've got the snare, the kick, crash and the hats as well so we can go through and say I don't want a snare there so I can delete this and let's just have a listen and same here as well I don't want a snare and let's just say I don't want to crash that so I can move this down to an open hi-hat let's just have a listen and then I want to put a crash here move this up to a crash and then we can just easily go through and edit our drummer information which is really useful okay so that's a quick overview of drummer in logic pro 10 if you want a more detailed description of the drummer feature in logic pro 10 be sure to check out my complete guide to logic pro 10 but thank you for watching this lecture and i hope you found it useful and i'll see you in the next lecture Hi, in this next lecture, I'm going to talk about automation in Logic Pro 10. So what automation allows you to do, it allows you to change certain parameters of the instrument, such as the volume or the effects or the pan over time. So for example, the first 10 seconds, you might want the drums really quiet and then you want it to gradually increase over time. We can do this easily with automation. We turn automation on by hitting this button over here. And then we've got these lines that appear. So the default you can see here is volume. 
So let's just click on this drum track and this will be the volume. So the lower it is, is the quieter the volume, the higher, the higher the volume. And this is time as well. So let's move this over to bar four and put the volume all the way down. So this should create a fade in kind of sound for the volume. Let's just hear this. You can also automate other things as well, such as the pan. So we can have this moving. I wouldn't normally do this with a drum kit, but let's just do it for an example. We can have pan from left all the way to right. Okay, let's just hear this. So if you're wearing headphones or you've got a set of speakers, you'll notice it went from the left speaker to the right speaker. You can also do this with other things as well, like certain effects. So on this bass sound here, if we open the inspector by hitting this button here, you'll notice that there is a bass amp and there is a compressor. So if we click on volume here and go on bass amp, so we can change certain things like the treble, for example. So this should create more of a treble sound and start off with less treble sound. Let's just hear this. It's quite hard to hear this one. The thing about this is you don't always necessarily know what all the things do straight away. For example, modulation one, source one. I don't really know what that means. Um, so it can be quite hard to automate certain things. We can automate a lot of things very simply by doing something called live automation. So if we click on this button here, it says read. If we go on touch or latch or write, it will actually allow us to do live automation. I use this a lot when I'm actually creating a lot of synthesized music. They can quickly change the knobs and the dials um, just live, which is so much quicker in my opinion. Touch basically means when you move the automation and you stop, it will go back to what it originally was. Latch basically means if you move the information and you stop moving it, it will stay where it is. Okay, I'll explain this as well, just in case it doesn't make sense. Right, I'd actually just leave for now. Let's just quickly go to latch. Okay, and that's open up the bass amp. Okay, let's just make this a bit smaller. Okay. And you can see there I was moving the boost and I'm still doing it now and it moves it. So what latch does is basically say I put the boost all the way down and I let go. The boost will stay all the way down. If I put it on touch and put the bass all the way up. You can see when I move it and play. But you can see there. It's quite hard to explain, but basically, touch puts it back to where it, orig it originally was, and latch leaves the automation to where you moved it to. Okay, what you want to do is once you've finished doing this automation, is go back to read. And you can also go in and touch certain things up as well. So, for example, I don't want to go in higher than there. I can move this over so it's like so. But for stuff like a bass guitar, I probably wouldn't really use live automation, but for synthesizers, it can be really, really handy. But yeah, a good thing to do is I would use a lot of live automation and then I'd go through and manually correct certain instruments. Let's just quickly open up a synthesizer. Go in software instrument and choose here ES2. And this will appear and you can see there's loads of different buttons and knobs. And yeah, there's so much to choose from the ES2. Let's just double click on the instrument here. And a lot of this can be quite daunting um, when you want to automate. 
So let's just go on automation here. Um, for example, yeah, a sin level on mix and filter might be quite difficult to actually know what it is. And all these as well, there's quite a lot to choose from. But if you're just manually going through and just moving stuff live as the track plays, the automation will write itself and it is a lot easier to actually manage and deal with. Okay, thank you for watching this lecture. In this lecture, I've gone over automation and live automation. I hope you find it useful and thank you for watching. Hi, in this next lecture, I'm going to talk about the ES2 synthesizer. So the ES2 is one of the more complicated and versatile synthesizers in Logic Pro 10. There's loads of stuff we can actually do with it, but on the first glance, it can look really complicated. So the way we get the ES2 synth up is by simply creating a new track, software instrument, and then going over to this button here and finding ES2 and hit stereo. If we double click, the ES2 will appear. As you can see, there's loads of different stuff going on here. I'll just quickly explain what the stuff actually does. Okay, I'm now I'm going to drag in a MIDI loop. The reason I'm doing this is so that I have to physically play in information just to hear the synth. A loop will just go round and round and round, so it's easier to edit. So carrying on from the loops lecture, it was actually on iLife sound effects, so remember to default back to loops. So let's choose this one. This one will do, 80s dance bass synth 7. Let's just drag it over here. And close automation by hitting this button. And here we go, and solo this. This actually changes the synth to this one here, AN basic. So if we click on this button, and go on ES2. This will open up the ES2 synthesizer. Of course, there's all the different synthesizers in Logic 2, but if you learn how to use ES2, the others will be quite simple, really, because ES2 is kind of the most complicated synth we have in Logic. So stuff in the ES2, if you know how to use this, you'll basically know how to use it in most of the other synths as well. So let's just play this loop. We do have the defaults, so we can click these buttons here. we can go in this button here and have a drop down. So say we want a synth lead, we can go on synth lead. Let's try mini sync. Okay, let's leave it on this one. And here we have the different types of waves. We have like sawtooth and the square. We also have a second oscillator as well. And a third. We have all these different sounds going at the same time. We also have a blend between the different two over here. We can turn on these different oscillators. Let's turn off oscillator two and three. You can see this kind of cage appears and locks it in. Now it's just oscillator one. You can hear that these actually do create a different sound. We have pitch as well. And we have the sense if we want to slightly detune it. Then we also have the cutoff. This can give a brighter sound. Same with the resonance and the drive. And this is exactly the same for another oscillator. Let's just leave it on one. We have stuff like distortion, and effects. There's also a little XY pad here as well. But I don't really use the XY pad to be honest. But these effects are chorus, flanger, and phaser. I do go into a lot more detail on my ES2 um, lecture in my Complete Guides Logic Pro 10, but this is just a quick overview just to get you up and running in using synthesizers and synthesis in Logic Pro 10. And under here we have stuff like the release, 
mid decay. Uh, let's just put the release up. And sustain. This stuff here, I'm not really gonna go into much detail at the moment, but this is how you basically create more effects on wobbles and pitch sounds um, through the oscillators and through controlling all the different parameters over here. With these things here. It's basically how we sync up different parameters to different LFOs. But for now, in this introduction, it's basically just, this controls the pitch, this controls the wave, this controls kind of the cutoff and the resonance and drive, and this is more kind of the effects. We do have the macros over here, which just quickly control loads of stuff. So if you're new to synthesis and you're a little bit confused about this lecture, maybe just start off by using the macros and listen to it and seeing what stuff actually changes. So if you look, at, when I increase the sustain, you can see that these two ones here that say S increase and I decrease, they decrease. So sustains basically how long the note has been held for. As you can hear right now, the note's been held a long time. If I put it down, it's not held as much. So this is a really, really brief overview of the ES2 synthesizer, just to get up and running and learning synthesis as well. Let's just quickly go over a few other ones. So like I said before, if you know how to use the ES2, the other synthesizers would be quite easy as well. Let's just go on Retro Synth. And here it's very similar to the ES2, but to be honest, there's less going on really. So this is the shape, this is noise. Vibrato. This is similar to, you have a mix between oscillator one and oscillator two. Synthesis is a very, very detailed subject and I'm just quickly going over the main topics here. But like I said earlier, if you do want a more detailed example of the ES2 synthesizer and synthesis, be sure to check out my complete guide to Logic Pro 10. And when you do complete this course, if you look in the bonus lectures as well, I will give you some really, really great discounted codes. So if you do want to check out my complete guide to Logic Pro 10, it will be a heck of a lot cheaper than if you buy it full price. So thank you for watching this lecture. I hope you found it useful and I'll see you in the next lecture. Hi, in this next lecture, I'm going to talk about flex. So we've got two different types of flex. We've got flex time and flex pitch. So flex time allows us to change the timing of the audio and flex pitch allows us to change the pitch of the audio. Flex pitch is brand new to Logic Pro 10 and it can be really useful for creating harmonies or just for correcting certain pitches also. Okay, so let's first of all continue where we left off in this project. But now I'm actually gonna delete all this and actually delete these instruments here. and this window will appear. Let's hit audio. But now I'm actually going to choose a loop and let's choose an audio loop. So on the loops here, choose vocals. Of course you can do this with real audio loops and your own samples, but for now I'm just going to choose a loop. Let's try voice. <laughs> Let's try this one. It says here, the added audio file contains tempo information. If you want to import it, let's import the tempo. The tempo anyway was at 120, and our tempo was at 120, so it didn't actually change anything. But if you do import the tempo, you can always go back and change it. One of the great things about Apple Loops is that they do adapt to your tempo of your project. 
If your loops or your own audio samples do not adapt to your tempo of your project, if you open up flex time and change the flex, you can easily adapt it then. Okay, so here we've got monophonic, which means one note at the same time. So stuff like vocals or a bass guitar, I'd use monophonic. We've got automatic, which basically automatically chooses what type of flex will be suited for our track. This is coming up as polyphonic, which means more than one note at the same time. We've got slicing and rhythmic, which are more for drums and speed effects and tempophone, which are more for creating effects with flex time rather than just using it for more traditional instruments. But for now, it's the same we should use polyphonic. Let's just have a listen to it. Trying hard to remember. I'm gonna use monophonic because I do think this will work better. Sometimes logic doesn't always do it perfect. You do have to use your ear and your own judgment at certain times. Okay, so you'll notice on here, we've got these different lines here. This is actually, well, logic thinks the different notes are. Let's just have a listen. Trying hard to remember. So it's quite simple, really. We can do a few things. We can click on this button here and go and quantize. This will actually quantize the information. But I generally prefer to do it all manually just because sometimes you might not want it to be perfectly in time, especially for vocals, you might want more free sound rather than having everything bang in time. That's what I think anyway, especially for more um, organic like rock or jazz music. You don't necessarily want everything to be perfectly in time. But what you can do is easily just drag these around. This might sound a bit squished and compressed. Let's just have a listen. <laughs> as you can hear, as I made the wave smaller, it actually made a lot quicker. And as I made it longer, it made the note longer. One of the great things about flex time is when you make the note smaller or larger, it doesn't change the pitch. Flex time can be really useful when you're recording stuff like electric bass and they haven't quite got the note perfect. You can just easily move the note in time, which is really useful. You can also get rid of these lines by double clicking and just create new ones by just clicking. It's really simple. The next one that we're going to go to is flex pitch. So this here you can see actually gives us the notes fine tunes. One thing I like to do, which is a little sneaky shortcut, is actually select all by command A, control click and set all to perfect pitch. So this will basically just tune your instrument. It's very useful for vocals or maybe if you have certain instruments that are slightly out of tune. Trying hard to remember. The only thing is if the singer uses a lot of vibrato, kind of wobbles the notes. Flex pitch can sound a little strange. Um, so a lot of the time, if I do want a kind of um, auto-tuned effect, I would get the singer I'm working with just to sing kind of legato smooth notes rather than um, more kind of vibrato notes. We can also double click on here and then we have a more detailed view of flex pitch. Here we have the piano keys and we can actually move this around. Let's hear this back. And we have these different arrows. We have fine pitch, we have pitch drift, format shift, vibrato. And gain and pitch drift as well. Let's just close the inspector. So pitch drift is basically if you want the singer to hit the note straight away or if you want the note to drift up and same at the end as well. So drifting down after. It can create a more natural sound if you do have a bit of pitch drift as well. Let's just have a listen to this. I've changed the notes to a C. It might sound a little strange. Trying hard to remember. Okay, one thing you can do as well is you can actually copy this over. So if we close flex pitch for now by hitting this button 
and then we duplicate the track by hitting this button and just drag it down, hold down Alt and literally drag down, this will copy and paste and open up Flex Pitch, double click on the second one. So if you remember, the first one is the C. Move this up to a G. So now we've created a perfect fifth and this will create a harmony. Same here. So this is a C, let's move this to a G. That's not a G, it says it's a G. That's a, a D sharp, so let's move this to an A sharp. Let's hear what this sounds like. We should create kind of a nice rich harmony with this, kind of perfect fifth. Very similar to what the Beatles do in their harmonies. Obviously, it's all synthetic. Trying hard to remember. Okay, let's just hear this. Trying hard to remember. So this allows us to quickly add on harmonies. If you're singing yourself and you're not very good at vocal harmonies, you can quickly tune these up or even just take the one um, vocal part and create your own harmonies digitally like this, which can really be useful. Okay, so in this lecture, I've gone over flex time and flex pitch. I hope you found it useful and I'll see you in the next lecture. Hi, so in this next lecture, I'm going to talk about mixing in Logic Pro 10. Mixing is a really detailed, dense subject. And if you want to know more about mixing, I definitely recommend checking out my complete guide to Logic Pro 10, where I've got a whole section and several different lectures on mixing. But I'm going to try my best just to quickly give you a quick overview of mixing and the mixer in Logic Pro 10. Like I said earlier, if you do want to have a look at my complete guide to Logic Pro 10, if you have a look in the bonus lectures, um, I do give you a really good discount and a great coupon co code as well. So I recommend checking that out if you want to know a bit more about mixing. But this will get you up and running. And this is just basically just meant to be an introduction to mixing. So let's create a new instrument and choose software instruments. I'll just close the library here by hitting the library button. And here we've got this button here which opens up a mixer. This is meant to look like an analog mixer in Logic Pro 10. We can drag it to the size we want. But what I like to do is close the mixer and open up the mixer in a new window. If we hit the key command, command two, this will open the mixer in a new window. So here we've got the setting, which is basically allows us to save our mixer setting. So if we really like the channel strip setting we've got, we can copy the channel strip setting or save the channel strip setting if we look down here, these are some I've actually created myself, some channel strip settings. So I used to write songs with a guy called Jordan. So I've got the Jordan kick, because these are some of the kick drums that um, him and I made. And I write music with a girl called Lizzie Joyce as well. So I've got Lizzie Bells. These are some bell sounds that uh, her and I use in a lot of our songs together. And going down, just loads of different various sounds. But Yorkie times, because... Um, I was listening to a lot of Tom York <laughs> and I found, um, I created some sounds that I thought were similar or got inspired by some sounds that he uses as well. But anyway, so there you can create your own sound and channel strip settings. And below this we'll have EQ. So this is an equalizer. And so you can basically change to add treble or take out bass or add bass. Got different bands here. We also have analyzer. So if we have analyzer hit and we play a song, we can actually see what the kind of waves it's creating. The actual frequencies are being used by this track. Let's just find an Apple loop. Um, just drag this. Yes, it is. Oh, drag this over. Okay, let's change the tempo because I allowed it to, to do so. And let's just find um, beat. Let's type in beat up here. And I'm just going to find, here we go, this one. I'm going to set up a loop just by moving this cycle area over here. Okay. Yes, it is. So now I have this vocal selected, and you can see it's actually moved to another section on the mixer. 
Let's click on EQ here. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. And these are the frequencies that are being created by the vocals. So what we could do is maybe take down a bit of the bass and boost a bit of the treble. If we click on the EQ here, we can move and boost. And if you have a really harsh frequency, it's really bad, say um, maybe some background sound or a, maybe, I don't know, a, a bit of feedback, you can find that frequency and completely cut it out, which can be really useful too. Yes, it is. And then we have other things as well. So here it allows us to create um, more plugins. So for example, if we click below, we have stuff like amps and pedal boards, like amplifiers, delay, distortion, dynamics, which is stuff like compressors, which basically makes the loud quieter, the quiet louder, limiter, which doesn't allow us to clip. So you might see sometimes if the sound distorts or goes into the red, we call it, if we put a limiter on it, it allows us to basically not let our music distort, which is really useful. A lot of the time, I will put a limiter on the master out, which is over here. So we've got stereo out and master. So if you go on here and go dynamics and limiter, this will mean your track will not clip and will not distort. The easiest way of doing this is to just go an output level here and move this to negative 0.1. So anything that goes above negative 0.1, it will not allow it to go there. If your track is really loud though and you put a limiter, it will kind of compress and squish the sound in not a very nice way. So always try and do everything by ear and not rely on too many plugins. Okay, going back to this. We've got EQ, which is the equalizer. We have different types of EQ here. Filter, we create a filter effect. Imaging. Metering. Modulation, which is more stuff like phases and choruses and tremolo. Pitch, if you want to create kind of um, an artificial pitch correction or pitch shifter or vocal transformer, reverb. Specialized, which is like a sub bass and exciter. Utility. Also have audio units, if you have um, any of your own audio units that aren't logic ones, basically. But yeah, it's such a dense subject. There's so much you can actually do with this here. Um, but very briefly, um, I would say, just try and use your ears as best as you can and try and allow space for each instrument. For example, if you have um, a synth bass and a live bass, you want to—you don't really want them to muddy up and clash in frequency too much. So I, I like to have a look at the EQ, an equalizer of each instrument, and just make sure there's enough space for every instrument to be heard. Because the worst thing you want is all the sounds kind of mushing up into one. So just allow a bit of space for everything, really. Yeah, this is a really dense subject, um, but quick <laughs> quick tips basically, don't let your track peak or distort, and allow space for every single instrument. Like I said earlier, I do go over this in a lot more detail in my complete guide. Um, but yeah, just go through each of these plugins manually and just see what they really are. Um, because there's so many different ones you can choose from. Um, Logic have done a great job on kind of organizing this. They're really easy to find format as well. Um, but yeah, that's kind of a basic, basic, basic overview of Mixim. There's so much more, but this is the Mixing Desk really. You can add EQ and different plugins. And up down here, we've got something called Bosses or Auxiliaries, which allows us to send um, multiple tracks to one effects unit. I'll just do this very quickly. So if we go on bus, and let's try bus free. And this is the amount. And this one as well, bus free. And here's the amount. So we've got a new channel here, it's B free, which is aux free. So basically, both of these channels are being sent to this one. So this dial is the amount that's being sent. And this allows us to put stuff like delay or reverb quickly and also allows us not to use up too much of the computer's uh, CPU. So basically, it won't crash or you won't get system overload as much if you use less effects or if you use a lot of buses instead of putting separate effects. And also, it allows you to kind of have the same effects on different instruments. So if you have all different delays that are kind of clashing, it might sound a little strange, but if you've got the same type of delay all being sent or bus to this one effects unit, it's a lot easier. Let's just hear this. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. 
There you can hear I added the reverb and took it away. Yes, it is. Now it's just the drums that has it. Yes, it is. And now it's just the vocals. Yes, it is. Okay, I do find the bus is very useful for reverb and for delay. Yeah, this is a very basic <laughs> overview of mixing. Uh, if we go below, we do have pan as well. So it's a left and right speaker. And this is kind of the volume as well. But one thing I would say is if you have automation sets, so if you have volume set, say here, this will override the mixer. So wherever the automation is, you try and move this up, it will go back down. So always remember to keep a note of where your automation is as well, because if you try and move it here, and you've got automation set, it will just go back to the automation basically. And below we can solo or mute. So yeah, that's just a quick overview of mixing in Logic Pro 10. I hope you found this useful. Thank you for watching. Hi, thank you for watching my introduction course in Logic Pro 10. This course is basically designed just to get you in the right direction to start making your own music. So hopefully when you open up Logic now, it's not so scary and you have a bit more of an idea to actually make your own music. If you'd like to go deeper and learn a heck of a lot more, I have got a complete guide to Logic Pro 10 on Udemy also. And this is basically yeah, a really, really advanced compared to this. And you'll learn, yeah, so much more. Um, it's a step-by-step -step guide. So if you want hours upon hours, over 10 hours in total actually of Logic Pro 10 knowledge. Be sure to check it out. Also included in this course is some interviews with some of my music industry friends. These are guys who are really elite and really at the top who work with people like Bastille, Kylie Minogue, uh, Roger Daltrey from The Who and Jack Garrett, loads of people too. So yeah, definitely check it out if you want to um, take your music knowledge to the next level. Included as well, is a coupon code just to thank you really for sticking with me in this introduction course and give you a massive discount over 90% off actually which is kind of crazy just to get you writing your own music really and hopefully you'll be able to yeah step up your game and be a much better music producer so thank you again for watching my course and I'll see you soon <laughs>